I'm going to draw a cell and I'm going to draw a mitochondrion because it's important to understand where this is all taking place to understand the electron transport chain. So I'm going to draw a very large cell So here's our cell, here's the nucleus, of course, the cytoplasm. So remember, glycolysis took place out here in the cytoplasm after glucose entered. And we generated two ATP and two NADH. And then those two pyruvate that we made if there's enough oxygen present, are going to enter a mitochondrion. I'm going to draw a mitochondrion here, but then I'm going to draw it bigger on the, on the side here. Okay, so if O2, if, if no O2, we're going to go through fermentation, and we'll talk about that later. But if O2 is present, we're going to complete the breakdown of glucose in the mitochondrion. Where in the mitochondrion? If you remember the lecture on cell organelles, we talked about the structure of a mitochondrion. We have what's called, oops, this is the outer membrane. Remember, it's a phospholipid bilayer just like all cell membranes are. We have this inner membrane, which is folded to greatly increase surface area. We then have this area called the matrix, and we have this space between the two membranes called the intermembrane space. Okay, so where is all of this taking place? Well, we're going to complete the breakdown of glucose here in the matrix. And if you go back, oops, <laughs> we're in the mitochondrion, and we're actually inside the matrix of the mitochondrion. That's where all the breakdown of glucose is going to take place. So all those electron carriers are in here. So we have a total of 10 NADH and 2 FADH2. Well, embedded in this membrane, embedded in this inner membrane of the mitochondrion are some very important protein complexes. And here they are. So this is in the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. We have these important protein complexes. What these protein complexes do is they strip those hydrogens off from the electron carriers and pump them out into this space. So as these electron carriers hit these protein complexes, those hydrogens are pumped out into this intermembrane space. And they start building up. Just like water behind a dam, they keep building up. They can't just come back across that inner membrane. The only way they can come back across is through a very specialized enzyme called ATP synthase. ATP synthase tells you what it does. It ends in ASC, so we know it's an enzyme. It synthesizes ATP. How does it do this? Well, like I said, these hydrogens are getting stripped away and pumped out here. That part of the story is called the electron transport chain. So those protein complexes are part of what's called the electron transport chain. All these hydrogens build up. They
they can't just come back across the membrane. The only way they can come back across is through a very specialized enzyme called ATP synthase. So I'm just going to draw a very small line here to represent ATP synthase, and then we'll look at it in more detail. What happens is this is an amazing, amazing enzyme. And here it is. Those hydrogens are here in this intermembrane space between the two membranes. They're all trapped out here. The only way they can come back into the matrix is through this enzyme. And this enzyme acts like a rotor. As the hydrogens cause this to spin, it rephosphorylates ADP. It's going to stick these phosphate groups back on the ADP to generate ATP. This is how we're going to make 32 additional ATP. So those hydrogens that were being carried by those elect electron carriers were a huge source of potential energy. Just like a hydroelectric plant, when the water comes through, it's going to generate elect electricity. As these hydrogens come through, they rephosphorylate ADP to form ATP. And that part of the story is called chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis is how we're going to generate 32 ATP. This whole story combined, the electron transport chain plus chemiosmosis, is called oxidative phosphorylation. So we've seen ATP made two ways now. One was called substrate level phosphorylation. Sounds like a big term, but when you break it down, remember phosphorylation just means transfer of a phosphate group from one molecule to another. And then the, the substrate level part means that we used an enzyme to transfer that phosphate group. This is now called oxidative phosphorylation. And oxidative phosphorylation has two parts. Electron cha transport chain. The electron transport chain sets the stage as those hydrogens are pumped out into this space. They can only come back across through that ATP synthase molecule. And when that happens, that part of the story is called chemiosmosis. Sorry, I keep losing this thing today. Okay, so here's oxidative phosphorylation. The electron transport chain. I'm going to read to you exactly what it says word for word. Electron transport and pumping of protons, H+, which creates an H plus gradient across the membrane. So all these hydrogens build up in this intermembrane space. The only way they can come back through is through ATP synthase. Chemiosmosis is ATP synthesis powered by the flow of hydrogen back across the membrane. It's going to rephosphorylate ADP to generate ATP. And that's how we're going to make 32 of our 36 ATP. That is all the detail you need to know about the steps of cell respiration. I'm going to create a chart to summarize all of this, but I want to show you also a nice figure that summarizes all of this. This shows you that glycolysis happens out here in the cytoplasm. They're saying cytosol, that's the liquid portion. We're going to make two ATP by substrate level phosphorylation we're also going to generate 2-NADH. We're going to go through pyruvate oxidation, which is going to generate 2-NADH. Notice it doesn't generate any ATP. Oxidative phosphorylation is going to generate the bulk of it. We're going to make two more in citric acid cycle. We made two in glycolysis, but this pyruvate oxidation does not generate any ATP. 
Why do we go through pyruvate oxidation? It's because pyruvate can't enter citric acid cycle. Only acetyl-CoA can. So we need to shave off another carbon from each of those pyruvates so we can complete the breakdown of glucose. It's also how we're going to harvest all the rest of our hydrogens. So we generate two NADH during pyruvate oxidation. Then we go through citric acid cycle. We complete the breakdown of glucose. We generate two more ATP by substrate level phosphorylation. We then go through oxidative phosphorylation. Two stages. Number one, electron transport. Stripping those hydrogens off, pumping them into that intermembrane space. And as they come back across through the ATP synthase, we're going to make 32 more ATP by turning that ATP synthase molecule and phosphorylating, rephosphorylating ADP to form ATP. So that's it in a nutshell. Let's make a nice little chart to summarize all of this. And then we'll quickly talk about fermentation and quickly talk about what happens with proteins and fats. making ATP from scratch. Here's the method by which we generate that ATP. Okay, and then electron carriers that are involved in each stage. Randally boards. Okay, first stage, glycolysis. Glycolysis, glycolysis. We start with glucose. We break it down into two pyruvate, two three carbon molecules. We make a net of two ATP by substrate level phosphorylation. I'm just going to abbreviate it SLP. Electron carriers, two NADH. Second stage, pyruvate oxidation. If you have an older textbook, this pyruvate oxidation is sometimes just called the transition phase. We start with 2-pyruvate. We end with 2-acetyl-CoA. This is what we need to go through citric acid cycle. We shave another carbon off and create a 2-carbon molecule. We make zero ATP during this phase. So this is not applicable. But we do produce 2 NADH. Okay, citric acid cycle, also called the Krebs cycle. We start with 2-acetyl-CoA. End with Nada. <laughs> we complete the breakdown of glucose. It doesn't exist anymore. Remember, all that energy is going to be in the electron carriers. We make two more ATP by substrate level phosphorylation, using an enzyme to transfer that phosphate group to ADP to form ATP. Six NADH and two FADH2. Okay, and then finally, the last stage, oxidative phosphorylation. What do we start with? 
just the electron carriers. This is not applicable. We're going to make 32 ATP. We really make them by oxidative phosphorylation, but in particular, it's chemiosmosis. And obviously, this is not applicable. So that is the summary of cell respiration. That is the level of detail you need to know. You need to know the terminology. You need to know the stages. You need to know the major events. If you take another biology class where you're expected to know the details, now you have this framework to plug in the details. Now you can look at all those details of glycolysis, each step, which enzymes are involved, what all the intermediate products are before we get to the pyruvate. So the details can be plugged in later. Let's quickly look at fermentation. So fermentation, remember, is anaerobic. Okay, so if not enough oxygen is present, in other words, it's anaerobic, we're going to go through fermentation. We don't go into the mitochondrion and complete the breakdown of, of glucose. Okay, in some organisms, we're going to produce ethanol. Yeast is a very good example of an organism that goes through fermentation and produces ethanol. In animals, those two pyruvate go through fermentation and we're going to produce lactate, also sometimes called lactic acid. That is the burn you feel in your muscles when you work to the point of anaerobic respiration. So we have ethanol and lactate as possible products. So again, it's the pyruvate that are going through this fermentation to produce those end products. And that's all you need to know about that in this course. If you take microbiology, you will learn more about fermentation. Okay, and finally, I just wanted to quickly show you that you can use proteins and fats as a source of energy for cell respiration. They enter the process at a different stage. So in the in the process of, of proteins breaking down, we break down to amino acids, we actually get rid of that amino group, and then you can see the two places that proteins can enter. Fats, we separate the glycerol from the fatty acid, and you can see the different stages of what those enter. Carbohydrates are the preferred form of energy for the body. Carbohydrates are a very important part of your diet. We talked before about complex versus simple carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates are probably the best thing you can eat. But realize, if you eat too many, you are going to get fat because the body will send carbs to long-term storage, which is fat, if not all of it is burned. Okay, so that concludes cell respiration. If you have any questions, please rewind the video. And also realize that some of these terms weren't clear, it might be that you need to rewatch the video on energy.